I've done these before, kind of predictions for what I think is going to happen in the future. And um, I'm, I'm pleased. About a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, I did a five part, you know, predictions, big predictions. And almost half of them have come true already. And I'm not saying this to pat myself on the back that these were, you know, good predictions. I think a lot of this is common sense. Um, the part that's surprising is I was predicting it would take like three to four years for some of this stuff to play out. And uh, either because of the virus or whatever, it's come a lot faster. But it's time to do another big prediction thing. And this time I'm going to try and get weirder and wilder with predictions, more bold. So I'm expecting more of these to be wrong, but let's get to it. Everybody, this is Perch. You know, predicting what's going to happen in comics is is interesting for me because I, I look at it and I think that one very true thing about the current comic industry is that so much of it is, I've used this term before, is in a state of arrested development, meaning change should be happening, but it's not. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Just the money is not completely in it. The you know, the big companies, the big publishers both benefit and struggle with the fact they've got large kind of corporate overlords uh, on, on top of them. And that's created an interesting situation where, you know, when you have a giant company bankrolling you, a lot of people believe that they'll help you move faster and invent faster. But usually that's not the case. The, the big corporate, you know, master typically makes you jump through more hoops to make change. So you can make, you know, steady incremental change, but rarely disruptive change. At the big two, it's just it's it's a little bit harder to do, and I think even harder now, you know, as AT and T is asserting more control, and behind the scenes as Disney is asserting more control, it's it's going to become even harder. But I want to make some crazy predictions ar around comics. So first off, you know, when all shakes out, I think DC is going to sit right around thirty or so comics a month, uh, probably tops. And I think we're going to get uh, kind of some different trade dress. I think that DC for a period of time is probably going to move more into, um, you know, almost writing for trade type stories. You're going to get very, very uniform arcs. You're going to get, uh, you know, two, six, eight issue arcs uh, that are very pretty defined. You're going to see more of an emphasis to, to leverage kind of the classic characters and the classic villains. And you're going to kind of fall into this niche of, you know, big stories kind of written for things, but just with definitive starts and stops. And I think the reason behind that is just kind of as, you know, we're seeing from the changes DC's making, they're moving to a, a more conservative, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I don't mean it politically. I mean, a more conservative approach to how these comics are solicited and marketed, and it's really going to be about money. And I think that that's, uh, again, that, that people hear that and they're like, ooh, they wince, but that, that's not necessarily a bad plan. It means that we're going to get maybe a few more um, checks and balances uh, around the plan that the comic books are doing. And if you look at the comic industry in the bigger view, I mean like the 40 year view, uh, titles and runs and editors that have had a plan tend to have more successful time. Uh, they, they, they tend to be a little bit more memorable because things feel a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more buttoned up. And I think that's what we're getting out of comics. I think Marvel is going to have a 2021 that looked a lot like DC's 2020. I think we're going to definitely see some pullback I think we're going to see, you know, some creators emerge as kind of the ones they're going to live with. I don't think we're going to see a massive sea change of, of kind of their big names go. But I think a lot of the smaller names are going to go away. And I definitely think we're getting, you know, much tighter kind of corporate uh, analysis, especially when the movies start back up again. I think there's going to be much more of a desire to have that comic stuff aligned. So I think we're going to actually see a lot of runs ending as we hit the, the end of the year and especially in kind of Q1 and uh, April, May of next year, I think we're going to see a lot more kind of uh, announcements of endings. You know, I think the like the Tanishi Coates run of Captain America will come to an end. I think Captain Marvel will come to an end and it will start over with kind of a new plan. I definitely think Marvel's going to still kind of try and make a big deal out of, look, we got this famous female author to write this famous female hero. I think you're going to see Marvel kind of continuing to play in that because Disney is enamored as well with that idea. But the difference is, I think those bets are going to get a little bit more uh, careful and a little bit more, you know, kind of a little bit more strategic in terms of what they do. And I think you're going to see people higher up in Disney kind of bringing some of these talents to the table, as opposed to the way it has been done, which is the comic division itself 
is going to make these uh, these changes. I think Joe Casada goes. I think he's he's um, short for the world, so to speak. I think Jim Lee, we start to see a lot less of him as he he spends more time kind of with the uh, cross promotional efforts. I think in terms of uh, you know, I, I think that you will see image uh, grow. Frankly, I need they need they need it, but I think you're going to see more creators that we current. I think I think you're going to see image grow to look a lot and behave a lot like Marvel and DC does today. You're going to see a lot of creators pop up there. You're going to see a lot of writers and artists kind of migrate. You're going to see a lot of titles. However, at the same time, I think that a lot of these books are going to um, struggle to find success. I think that in a lot of creators' minds, they believe that if they just went to Image and had their own ticket, that they could create the saga, the Walking Dead, the uh, Wiccan and the Divine type runs. And I think it takes a certain type of creator, a special creator, to do that. And I think a lot of the people are going to make their way over to Image are going to find themselves with six, eight issue runs that are going to fall well below what people expect. Um, I think you're going to continue to see crowdfunding uh, grow, but I also think you're you're going to see more. You're going to see books make less money, meaning there it's going to it's going to even out. You're going to see fewer and fewer books kind of crossing that hundred thousand mark or that two hundred thousand mark, unless they're really really big names and they're they're you know building on the audience you've created. But I think you're going to see a lot more settle into kind of the you know, the uh, 40,000 to 60,000 as, as being, you know, quite successful. I think that's That's going to set a new benchmark for, for what big success looks like is going to be in that realm. Um, I think that, you know, I think that the virus will kind of get under control here to some extent. I think, you know, the, the election will go down, the fear will drop uh, just one way or another. People stop using that for everything under the sun. And I think we'll we'll get to a place where come January, February, people are going to start to kind of get their heads together and really sort out this retail thing. Um, I think that in digital, we're going to see kind of some, you know, we're going to see the same old models go, but you're going to see a couple of people try some very, very different things. And in particular, I think there's going to be more of a connection to fans. And what I mean by that is you start using the platforms of laptops or, or mo- more likely mobile and tablets to send messages to people when new content's available. I think you're going to see a lot of creators uh, go digital first and start to do things like here's a page at a time or here's two, four pages at a time. The idea of a 22-page you know, run of a comic, I think, is going to get dismantled to some extent. I think you're going to get um, shorter, more frequent bursts of pages. And I think you're going to see some creators really embrace that model of being able to tell sequential storytelling in the realm of, you know, you get like a page or two a day and then that's or, or every or, or one page every one to two days. And that's kind of becomes the new model. And then the phone wakes up. It's like, hey, there's a new page for you. And, you know, you you get the comic that way. That's going to be jarring for a lot of comic fans who are just not used to reading like a page at a time. And it's going to be weird. But I think it's going to create a whole other market of how comics are, are delivered and consumed. Um, I think that there's some new players on the horizon on the indie world who are going to emerge and start to put some reliable comics out. I think it's really just sitting there for some creators to come in and kind of deliver the comics that people, you know, liked having in the 80s and 90s. Now, I don't mean the vapid kind of, uh, you know, that that kind of stuff. I mean, I mean, comics that are more solid kind of runs where somebody's going to settle in, they're going to tell a story. It's it's going to be a lot more kind of... Uh, long-term thinking of just creating a world, whether it's superheroes or, or whatever it happens to be, I think you're going to see some people finally figure out that they can just completely mimic the Marvel or DC in the 80s and grab a bit of an audience and run with it. Um, I think that you're going to see Scholastic make some pretty big moves and truly threaten Marvel and DC with this space in terms of both delivering and managing content. I think that Scholastic will either partner or buy up um, one of the smaller comic companies, and you'll see them make some really active steps in that. And I think you're going to see Marvel and DC in particular flail a little bit because they are not capturing the, let's call it the eight to 14 year old market. And somebody, you know, other people, I think Scholastic is most likely to do it, but there's a couple other people who could really get some success in this market, speak to the kids, get this moving and, and get a lot of success. I think over in the world of manga, I think you're going to continue to see fairly steady behavior out of manga. I don't think you're going to see a a giant manga spike or drop. 
I think that there's content that's still filtering out there. I think a lot of people in Japan right now are trying to figure out how to take content and bring it to the U.S. and and find new ways to localize and, and move that stuff over. I think that we're going to see over the next two to three years a renaissance in a lot of the European content. And what I mean by that is that uh, you're going to see more of, of that material find a market and get out of uh, Europe and and find some you know some buyers here in the U.S. or South America or you know or in Asia who will be after this content. There's a huge library of European content that really has not found a good kind of Tokyo Pop like distributor that can uh, push this stuff out and and get it in the hands of of different markets. I think that's a that's a business opportunity waiting to happen. Um, I think that for about the next ten years. I think that the people who are at the top of their game, and when I say top of their game, I mean really the top of their game, the, uh, the great Capullos, the, um, uh, the, you know, the Sean Gordon Murphys, the, you know, I, I think the people who are making big comics who have big names and a very distinctive style, I think are going to be uh, very well served and in a, in a pretty strong place. I think if you have a name and you have a style, um, I think that, there's going to come this point where the big two and some of the indies are going to look at you and say, you know, I need to have some safer bets. If I'm publishing a smaller line of comics, then I'm going to need to have just some safe bets with talent and let's figure out a way to make the money work. I, I think there's going to be some new contracts uh, coming. In fact, this was a bit of a sucker bet because in talking to some folks in editorial, I know that there's already a lot of thinking around this way where, you know, maybe for the first time we truly get better rev share type contracts from the big two, I think that that's uh, that's a model that is going to be explored. Particularly, again, if there's if there's limited money, there's limited portfolio. You're putting out books, but maybe you're publishing a few fewer books, so you have a little bit more money to play with. I think there is going to be that. Hey, you know, we need to have some safe bets in the line. If we're going to be scrutinized by the comics we put out, we're going to need to have at least, you know, uh, let's let's call it a comic a month, or you know, we're going to need a one big mini series or issue or something to pop every quarter. And so, you know, we can't screw around by, you know, giving that money away to unknowns. And when I say unknowns, I mean, like, like the, what Marvel did with the uh, JJ Abrams and son, Spider-Man, you put Sarah Pacelli out there, you spent a bunch of money to do that. And you really didn't get the return that you were expecting on that book. And so, you know, that begs the question of, Hey, if you're Marvel, and you, you know, for whatever reason, this now this analogy doesn't work great because you've got Hickman over there running the X-Men universe and, and is making some money off that. But if you want to say, look, we need to have one kind of 42 page you know, book this quarter that we can confidently sell, going to say is going to sell 150 copies, uh, 150,000 copies, I should say, you know, let's let's find a way to get, you know, Alex Ross or J. Scott Campbell or Art Adams or somebody like that. Let's find a way to give them the money they want. So we guarantee that this book is going to be a top seller. The challenge is on the writing that that's m much more of a dodgy bet these days. I, I, you know, you could say put Chris Claremont on a book. It sounds good. I would love it. But Chris Claremont is not a guaranteed 150,000 copy seller, which, which I know sounds crazy to people who love Claremont. But it's like there's not a lot of writers who actually claim that right now. You know, you, can Bendis claim that? No. King? No. Uh, Snyder? No. Um, I, I, there's, there's really no current writer out there that you say you put this writer on a comic and you're guaranteed to sell 150,000 copies. Now, if you said, uh, there's a new 42 page, um, OGN and Claremont is doing this with Alan Davis and it's going to be a, you know, a, a tale of Excalibur or something like that, which reunites that team. I think you get a lot of interest and you get people very happy. But even there, I don't think you break 100,000. Now, if you said, uh, you know, uh, Mark Millar and uh, Steve McNiven are going to come on and do a kind of pseudo follow up to Civil War. Yeah, you're probably getting 150,000 plus book. And, and so it's, it's, it's an interesting place that comics are at where careers are concerned. But anyway, these are a few of my predictions. And now I'd love to hear some of yours. So in the comments below, let me know your crazy predictions. Maybe my predictions weren't as crazy as all that. But anyway, let me know your thoughts. Oh, anxious to hear them. Uh, like, subscribe, follow me on social media, all that kind of cool stuff. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure talking to all of you and hearing your ideas and your questions and your thoughts. So let me have it. Let me know what's on your mind. Most importantly, though, 
Thanks for listening. 